Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I'll be talking about a very important subject that causes a number of questions and a lot of discussions on our support forum, and that is session expiration. The, the concept is very simple, but there are so many different variations, so many different little things that may occur depending on how you set up your authentication, where the number of different use cases uh, is quite high. Uh, well, I will try to cover as many as I could think of as I was preparing for this video. What's session expiration? It all goes back to the authentication and the initial login. So whenever user logs in, and we know that you get back in your application back endless user object, and that session is identified by user token. Remember the user token video that we talked about uh, how that session is identified. So user token is the actual identifier of that session. User token travels back and forth between your application and the backend to identify that user. Well, that user token has an expiration time and basically is set to live for a certain period of time that you can actually configure in backendless. But after some inactivity of the user, that token is set to expire. And then that's when the session expiration happens. And the question is, how do you deal with that session expiration in your application? Because uh, in most cases, dealing with it from the user experience perspective is rather straightforward. If the session is expired, in most applications, you would want to redirect the user to the login screen so they can re-authenticate themselves and then just move on with their business in your application. But things may go wrong if you haven't thought about them in your app. So, but let's start off by talking about the actual expiration and where you configure it in Backendless. And that is done on the users screen in Backendless console. So go into the users and then in the login session, uh, in the login section, there is a, a, a part here that says enable session timeout. By default, whenever you create an application in Backendless, it's going to look like this. So it's going to be completely turned off with a very high inactivity timeout value. I enabled it and I set my inactivity timeout to 20 seconds. And that is, the reason I did it is just so we can simulate that session timeout and see what happens with an app once that timeout occurs. So here I have 20 seconds. By default, it is a high, very large number, which I think is equivalent to like a one month of user inactivity. You can configure it in your application to match whatever makes sense in with the requirements of your app, of course. So what happens here with this, let's say 20 seconds, it's easier to think about it whenever it's small, uh, again, for the demo uh, purposes. So 20 seconds it, uh, here, it means that whenever user makes an API request that includes a user token, or uh, even if the user doesn't make an API request, after user logs in, that inactivity timeout starts. So inactivity timeout starts once a user token is issued. And then this inactivity timeout is reset again to 20 seconds. As soon as an API call arrives during that inactivity timeout. So a uh, timeout period. So let's say we, we logged in 20 seconds, got started. And then on second 10, an API call uh, is received and the user is doing something with the backend with, with, with the server, then this 20 seconds is reset and then it starts 20 seconds again. An API calls, uh, call comes in and then it's reset and then 20 seconds starts. So it's constantly reset as long as an API call or any kind of interaction with the server from your application occurs from an authenticated user. If the, these 20 seconds lapse and session is expired the actual token that identifies that user is invalidated so whenever it is sent to the server saying hey server you know retrieve something from the database or do whatever before backendless does anything it will check if that user token is valid or not there is a separate api to verify this user token we will not be talking about it here, I believe it is going to be in the scope of an, another another video, but it is related to the session timeout. Here we'll be talking about specifically how to deal with timeouts. So here, once the token is expired and you make an API request, 
you'll basically get an error back saying this session has expired this token is invalid depending on the scenarios it's going to be either session expired token invalid the bottom line it's pretty much the same and meaning that this session is no longer valid so i will demonstrate a couple of things uh, in my UI builder application, but it is not specific to UI builder. This, this kind of scenario may occur in any application that uses backendless API. So for this, let's go into UI builder and try to simulate this session timeout scenario. So for this, what I have prepared, uh, they have, we have a, uh, a page and, um, uh, that page essentially will let me run this page and you will, will, will talk about what's going on in there. So here, uh, the very first time I run my application, I'm presented with a login. So I'll be logging in into my account and I will set, uh, let's say, we will set this remember me option. And what that does is that the token is going to be saved on the client side to, to user token to represent my session. Next time I run this, app if i do it within 20 seconds i will not i will not need to log in so we're logging in this application starts and this application uh, behind this button uh, there is an api call and notice that i put a timer here so we know exactly when 20 seconds are up so i click this button i fetch another picture timer is reset so as long as i do it within 20 seconds my session will stay alive, okay? So even though, uh, let's say if I make this API call, I got new picture, I can close this page and I can rerun the whole thing. It redirected me here and I'm still logged in, okay? So my session has survived restart of the app and this applies to both apps built uh, in UI Builder, apps running on the mobile device, whether they're native or a UI builder app running on the mobile device, it is it will work uniformly. So here I'm still, you know, causing activity. In fact, we can open up the network traffic. And then here, here, whenever I fetch, uh, make a request to the server, you'll see that in these API requests here, I'm going to continue making these requests just so the session doesn't time out. In these API requests, you'll see in the request headers, this user token is still present. In fact, let me move this window a little bit just because it's outside of the boundaries of what I'm recording. So in here, you see that this is user token that is being sent to the server every time I'm making that request. So here, so far, we have seen that session still alive and I can close the, uh, the page and I can run it again and the session is there, okay? So here, what we are going to do is, uh, we will wait for these 20 seconds to lapse. We will know that the session will time out, that the user token is gonna be invalid. On the 21st second, I will close this page and I will run that application again. And uh, I would like you to guess before I do it, what is going to happen. So here it is, 21 seconds. Close the page and let's run it again. All right, so we are presented with a login screen where previously, when the session was still alive, we were going straight to the application, okay? Now, there's gonna be something different that I'm going to do this time. Let me log in first. Uh, we can do remember me, it doesn't really matter at this point. And let's open the network traffic and uh, see what's going to happen. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make a request. So we see that there is a request. This requests return. Uh, uh, it returns an object with actual URL of the picture. This is where we fetch that picture. And then when 21 seconds pass or 20 seconds pass, I'm gonna make another request and I will, and right now it's 21 seconds as you can see here, Let's make another request, boom. So this request, notice that the response uh, is not 200 and HTTP 200 means it is okay. It is not 200. So let's take a look at what happened on the server. So this is the request and this is the response. Notice that the response is error. There is a, a code 3048 
and then the message is session timeout. Okay. So what happened here is when as soon as that session has expired, and I made a request to the server to fetch data from the database. By the way, these find requests are going against the database. I'll, I'll, towards the end, I'll demonstrate what I actually had going on in the database with all these pictures. That's be, be, beyond the point right now. What's important right now is that as soon as we had session expired, we had a different response from the server that basically said the session has expired. And then the question is, how do you deal with this? So at this point, there are two scenarios that we had. One we already dealt with, uh, and I will demonstrate how. So the first scenario that we had is when we had that session stored on the client side. Will uh, 20 seconds passed, that session got invalidated. I restarted the app and I was redirected to the login screen. That's a scenario number one, and I will explain how that happened. Scenario number two right now is not dealt with which is when we get an error back from the server. So first thing first, let's take a look at scenario one, specifically when session has expired and I relaunched the app, how come it went to the login screen uh, in that case, and when the session was still alive, how come it went straight to this application where I can fetch pictures. Let's take a look at the logic behind this. And that is going to be on this page, which is sort of my router. You actually never see this page. And throughout this example, uh, it never came up, but it is always used. In fact, this is the page that I'm launching. And this page is sort of a router. Okay. This is how this routing works in Codeless, but it, exactly the same logic I would uh, expect to see in all applications that we need to have this behavior to identify is the user logged in, is the user not logged in, what to do. So here, the very first thing that I do in this uh, on this page is I check if there is this current user. In my previous video, I talked about getting the current user. Okay. So if I log in and I say stay log in, logged in, that current user, the information about that user is saved in uh, on the device. Next time I launch this page, get current user will say, okay, well, I have a user token. I need to go fetch that user. It goes out to the server and the server says, this token has expired. And then if that token has expired, then the get, get current user returns null. There is no current user. It has expired. In this case, if the get, get current user is null, then I redirect uh, to, uh, to the login screen. See, so go to page login. And then I'm passing the name of the page that needs to open once the user successfully logged in. So this is how the redirect to the login happens if there is no current user or that user has expired. All of that is sitting behind this block to get current user. If the current user is not null, then I go straight to the page which does the demo of the session expiration. So this is how we dealt with scenario number one, deciding which page to go to based on the fact whether there is or there is not current user. The important thing to remember here is this guy when you restart application and you did stay log logged in, will refetch that user from the server. And if that user session has expired, it will return null. So that's thing number one. Second of all, on the page when we were making a request to the server and that request was basically giving us that 3048 error. That will be happening on the session expiration demo. So this is the page that I used to make those requests to the server. So in here behind this button is the logic to go and fetch this random picture URL. This is, if you're curious, this is a, a codeless function that I put together. It looks like this. It basically goes out to the server. It grabs uh, an object from the picture uh, table. It uh, does it randomly. There are 40, 44 pictures in there. So this is sort of just pure demo and then I'm getting the URL. Now, what's important is how do we deal with a situation when server returns an error? If you watched my Codeless Fundamentals course, one of the lessons in there, one of the lectures, was how to deal with errors. And in there, I was talking about uh, how to handle errors in Codeless. And for that, there is this try catch block. If you are uh, not a Codeless coder, 
if you write code you, uh, with our SDKs, you'll essentially be handling an exception that is thrown from the API, and that exception will contain that error code. But in Codeless, what we are going to do is we will put all this functionality of fetching that URL and just doing what, all those things to render that picture, we'll put it into the try block, okay? And inside of this catch with error, we will put the logic to understand what happened. So if it is a session expiration, we will redirect the user to the login screen. And for this, the following logic will apply. So we will put if here, and we will be checking the uh, code property of the error. And the code is 3048, the one that we need to uh, check. So the property is going to be code. And the code will be from the object error. And the value that we care about is 3048. So if the value of the property code in the air, and this air is essentially what was thrown from the server. It is now encapsulated in this object air. So if it is 3048, what we want to do is we want to go to page. That page will be login. And then once the user logged in, we want to redirect back to the session expiration page. And for this, it's going to be it's going to look like this. Redirect. The name of the page is session expiration demo. Let me go over this one more time. So the logic where an error may happen that the session has timeout, I'm putting into the try block. If this error occurs, the server returns this error, it's going to be thrown out of there and then caught in this block, catch with error. And then here I'm checking, okay, is the code property of the error 3048? If it is, then I'm redirecting the user to the login screen because I know a session has expired. And then once that user successfully logs in, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm basically saying come back to the session expiration demo. Let me put it all together and rerun this, um, this demo. So here, running this page again, we're going to go into the login screen. I am logged in now. We can make, let's see, one request, session got reset. We're waiting for 20 seconds. And then upon those 20 seconds, error will come back and it will be handled in that logic that we put together on this very page. So as soon as it hits 21 seconds, I'm going to be clicking this button again. And it is going to be now. Boom. So server returned an error. Now the, 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 the page is smart enough. Okay, well, it's, it's session timeout. Let's re-log in. And if I re-log in, I go back to where I started. This is it. In pretty much all of the scenarios that occur, this will boil down to two things. One is how to deal it when the application restarts and your session is not valid. Number two, how to deal it in the runtime. If the user is sitting on the screen, time passes by, whatever the session timeout is in your application, could be weeks, maybe months, but then they eventually decide to do something. And in this case, you need to know how to handle an error that is coming back from the server. This is it. I do hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, happy backhandless coding.